Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Magnus Spot versus the Midden Spot series. Now, in the last video, my production quality was probably pretty bad. I wasn't using a proper mic, but people still left a few likes to the video, so I appreciate that a lot. So we're about to delve into the match here. And so let's see how we get started. So we've got Magnus play Magnus Spot, um, and I chose Magnus age 30 for this video. Last video was age 29, so both very strong bots. We have a bit of a Trompowski attack, which is interesting. And this is the last book move here. And we end up with this structure here where white wants to trade off their dark squared bishop and then just chuck the pawns on dark squares to sort of control all the dark squares using the pawns. So we have this move here and you can see white starting to build that pawn complex on the dark squares there. So both sides are getting their pieces out, getting developed. White hasn't committed to trading off the bishop just yet, because it's currently pinning that knight there. And instead of trading for the knight, white actually decides to trade off that bishop for black's bishop. Which isn't such a bad idea, because it leaves black without any pieces other than the knights that can control the dark squares. And black's pawns are already fixed on light squares, so it actually makes a lot of sense. Middens brings the rook to the c file, and Middens wants to take some space on the queen side now. Magnus has moved his pieces to the semi open c file as well, so he doesn't want to lose control of that file. And he thinks it's probably going to become open, so he's moved the troops over there. White makes a very committal pawn push forward, black closes it down immediately, trying to retain control of that space. We have some reroutes from white with the knight. Middens is rerouting its pieces and so is Magnus now, trying to find the optimal squares for those knights. And there's also a lot of shuffling going along on these files, so the B file is actually open now, but it's the C file with the hanging pawn that is getting contested. Magnus tries to find the optimal square for his bishop, but Middens does not allow it. But what we see here is Magnus actually creates a hidden threat on that queen, so his bishop is unable to get captured just yet because he'd lose the queen. So Middens slides that queen out of the way, and that enemy pawn gets captured. So Magnus is actually up material now. And Magnus actually wins another pawn, so Magnus is up two pawns now. We have a little bit of an incursion with the whites from knight, but uh, Middens has no real way to make inroads into Magnus's position. We have a bit of shuffling here. Magnus wants to avoid any checks and, and remove himself from the scope of that bishop. So Middens is trying to charge forward with the pawns and create some kind of attack on Magnus's king because it knows that. It is down a few pawns worth of material, so it needs to strike soon. And Magnus is just up a lot of material at this point. He can actually afford to give that pawn back there because he's already up so many. So this is an interesting move here, centralizing the queen. And then Magnus needs to make sure that his queen can't get captured with a discovery from a bishop sacrifice. Magnus starts to put his push his past pawn forward as you need to do. And he offers a trade of queens, which Middens accepts. It's going to be very difficult for Middens in this position. The past pawn is extremely strong. And it's so far advanced now, it's very difficult to stop this pawn. And brilliant move there. Magnus sacrifices his entire rook for the bishop, which was the only piece left that could capture that pawn. And now he's actually able to bring that rook all the way down to the first rank and force that capture of the rook, which is defended by the bishop. So now Magnus is actually up a full bishop, and he just needs to take down that one pass pawn of middens, and he's going to be running away with this game. So let's see, can he do it? 
both bots are going to be extremely strong in the end game. And Magnus wins another pawn. That pawn that Midden's committed too far forward at the start comes back to hurt him, but it is looks like it could be too late. Midden's tries to create the threat of the pawn promoting, but it's going to be impossible. There's just not enough material remaining. And Magnus starts to march his own pawns down the board as well. Looks like another one of Midden's pawns is going to fall. And as we can see, Magnus has traded off that last remaining rook. And he's going to make another queen. There's no stopping this pawn now. Here he goes. This will be an outrageous upset. Middens is considered a very, very strong bot, and Magnus easily cleaned up Middens with the black pieces as well. What an amazing performance.